Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. When it comes to acrylic pouring, it can be kind of confusing with the terminology that the more experienced artist uses. So what I wanna do is just answer a couple of questions and then I'm going to mix a couple of paints with you that will qualify for 90% of the acrylic pouring techniques out there that you're seeing, such as a ring pour, a swipe, uh, open cup, uh, straight pour, dirty pour, all of those techniques. This recipe that I use today, you can use for all of them. But let's talk about the recipes. What are they? The acrylic pouring recipes are recipes that you kind of craft yourself and just like a homemade cooking dish that you make you put in certain ingredients to get certain tastes okay so for acrylic pouring uh you use certain ingredients to get certain effects so for example a ring pour you want your pour, when you do a ring pour, to have nice, strong rings that stay together. Uh, you don't want a lot of cells in that technique. So for something like that, you would use paint mixed with a actual pouring medium. Now, that's another term that a lot of people are confused by. Pouring medium technically means a store-bought pouring medium, like Liquitex pouring medium. Uh, Golden has a pouring medium. Artist Loft sells a pouring medium. And what you do with that product is you mix your paints with it to thin them down, and then you are able to pour with them. What happens, though, is a lot of us, myself included, make our own pouring mediums out of different ingredients, and we call them pouring mediums because... Technically, we are pouring our paints with them, but chemically speaking, they are not an actual pouring medium. There's a big difference. So some people will use, and just for this video, when I say pouring medium, I'm referencing what people are using to make their own homemade pouring mediums. So some people will use something like Floetrol, and water as a pouring medium. Others will use something like glue and water. Some will take Floetrol, and this, this what I'm talking about now kind of covers both of these, why so many recipes and what are they? Some will take Floetrol, a little bit of gloss medium, such as this, and water. Now, why do they do that? Well, the Floetrol, first of all, is economically priced, so we can afford to use more of that versus an actual pouring medium, a whole uh, real pouring medium. This is just Floetrol in here that I strained. Always strain your Floetrol. There's always clumps in it. Anyway, so Floetrol is economically priced, and it creates cells for us and lacing in our paintings. But why add something like a gloss medium? Well, it says it right on the job. Your answer is right here, gloss. This is going to help your paints dry shiny. And also, because it's made with different chemicals than the Floetrol, when the two get together and intermingle with the paints that are made with different chemicals, it will create a different effect. So there's, there's versions like that. There's people that will use Floetrol, glue, gloss. I mean, they all have their added benefits. So the best thing you can do when you're first learning is pick one simple recipe and stick with that. Now, a lot of people will ask, can I just do the glue and water and still get cells? No, not unless you add something like a silicone to your paints. You will not get cells. But glue and water is good for doing something like a ring pour or a straight pour or any of the other pours out there. There are three main techniques 
that the recipes that I'm talking to you about today do not jive with, okay? Well, actually, there's only two. The, the pearl effect technique and the bloom technique. Those two techniques are heavily based on chemical reactions and you need to use or add in different products to get those, those effects. The bloom technique, for example, we're using house paints and varnishes and Australian Floetrol or American Floetrol doctored up to be Australian Floetrol. We're using those because those chemicals create that specific reaction. The pearl technique, we're using something like a regular recipe that I'm gonna show you today, like Floetrol and water, and we're adding in a little bit of a satin enamel paint because a satin enamel paint will create this puffy, pearl-like cell in your painting. So if you're new to acrylic pouring, the best thing that you can do for yourself is get one simple recipe, which would be either glue and water or Floetrol and water, and get some of these tech, the easier techniques learned before you go on to more advanced techniques, such as the pearl effect technique or the bloom technique. Now, I was about to say there's, there's three techniques that the common recipe doesn't really work for, and then I stopped myself and said two. That third technique was the Dutch pour, and the only reason why I stopped myself was because for that one, the, these regular recipes will work, but the consistency is so much thinner than all of the acrylic pouring techniques that I kind of leave that one out. But you can do a Dutch pour with glue and water. You can do one with Floetrol and water. You can do one with Floetrol pouring medium. You just have to know that that one technique, the paints are much thinner than the general techniques I'm talking about today. Again, general being your common open cup, your, your dips, your flower, uh, bottom of the bottle flower pours, your ring pours, your straight pours, dirty pours, wing pours, all of those pours that you, you hear of, all except for those two. And like I said, the Dutch pour, you know, it will work, but you just got to watch out with the water. You got to use a little bit more than the common ones. So today, like I said, I'm going to make the one simplest recipe to me to do that will be kind on your wallet and will be easy to understand. So do I need to use all of these recipes that are out there? No, you don't. You can pick one standard recipe like I'm using today and use it for all of the techniques that you want to do except for the, those two, the pearl effect and the bloom technique. So that brings us to this last one. What is the best and easiest recipe? And there's two. It's either going to be the glue and water or the Floetrol and water. Those are the, the easiest, okay? What are the best recipes, in my opinion, for regular acrylic pouring? It would be Floetrol and water. Uh, Floetrol, a little dash of pouring medium, a gloss pouring medium, and water is also really good. Again, you have to decide what do you want out of your painting. So here's my thing. When I do a painting... I don't worry about if it's going to dry shiny or not because I'm going to resin all of my paintings. If you want to skip the resin and varnish step and or varnish step, actually that's wrong, resin or varnish step, then you'll want to add a little bit of some type of a gloss medium to your paint. So you could do the one that I showed you or you can use Liquitex sells a gloss medium slash varnish product and you can use um you can add actually a little bit of of um, gloss varnish to your paint 
you know, to your recipe. That's only if you're not going to finish it. In my opinion, every painting you should make that you want to keep or sell should have a finish put on it to protect the paints. Okay, so I know I said I was going to show you how to mix the paints, but because I have done that for the last four videos, I'm just going to tell you really quickly what I did here. I put a big squirt of paint at the bottom of the cup, which equaled about a tablespoon, filled the cup up to almost the top with Floetrol, and then put a few drops of water in each color. Now, the most important part of this whole entire process is the water, not the amount of paint or Floetrol you're using. Of course, you want to use enough paint to color the Floetrol, but it's the water. And as I have explained in previous videos, each color and brand takes a different amount of water. So therefore, we as artists on YouTube can only guide you and show you what we are using. You have to experiment with that water. Type of color I'm going to show you how to mix is a fluid, a golden fluid color. What you want to do for this is different. You want to fill your cup up with your pouring medium that you're, you've made. Uh, again, this time for me, it's just Floetrol. And then you want to do a couple of drops at a time until you get the achieved color. These are very pigmented. They're expensive, so you use less of them. Now, I said fill up the cup, but let's say you only want to make, make a little tiny bit of this color. Just fill the Floetrol as deep as you need for color. So however much of that color you want to make, pour that much Floetrol in the cup first and then a couple of drops at a time of this. So that's, I'd say, about 10 drops, give or take. Give it a swirl. I could tell already that's too light. These really work well with an actual pouring medium, like Liquitex pouring medium or Golden or Artist Loft, because those mediums are clear in nature. Uh, Floetrol, <clears throat> I don't know if it has titanium in it. I swear it has white glue in it. So that can dull the color a little bit, but just keep adding a few drops at a time until you achieve the color that you want. All right, but I will tell you that using Floetrol with fluid, golden fluid paints, as you see me doing here, and these are not even full drops. I'm kind of just like shaking a little bit out of the bottle. These golden fluid paints mixed with just Floetrol are the perfect consistency for all acrylic pouring. You need to add no water, okay? So if you're struggling and you don't know what the, the right consistency of acrylic pouring is, get one color, any color. You can even get a small little tiny bottle. You don't have to buy this bottle. Go on to my Blick link. Grab a bottle of golden fluid acrylics. Not high flow acrylics. Fluid acrylics. And then, here I'll show you the label really quick again. So you can see what it looks like. Fluid acrylics. And then get yourself some Floetrol. Just pour any amount in a cup and add some color and it will show <laughs> it'll show you how to spill your paint out like I just did. And it will teach you the correct consistency for all acrylic pouring except for the big three that I keep mentioning. The Dutch pour, the bloom, and the pearl technique. Okay, so now we are going to do an open cup galaxy type pour. Now, um, I went and dumped my black paint on the canvas and got that all covered to save us some time. Here I have an open cup 3D tool made by Pour Scrape Repeat, the same company that makes the um, Puffy. He sent me some toys to play with, so this is just one. I'm going to stick it right in the center here. Make sure... Looked like there was a cat hair on there. Right in the center, on top of the wet paint. 
Now I did not add any silicone to my paints, as you saw. So we're gonna see if we can get the Floetrol to create some magical effects for us. I do have a fly buzzing around, I hear him, and it's gonna be funny if he lands right in this paint. Okay, so I'm gonna do the open cup pour by adding just a, a small amount of each color in. Now I will say right about there was plenty of paint. I added too much as I always do because I just get caught up in the color. It puts me in a trance kind of. <laughs> but uh, you're going to fill it up and then you're going to slide that little gadget around and it's going to release all that beautiful color. This, this right here just made me so happy when I did it. It, I loved the composition. I was so upset, though, that I had to tilt it because I had way too much paint on there. It would never dry with that much paint on there, so it would crack. So I gave it a good torch and started tilting it around, but I would have loved to have kept that design right there. And if I was careful with the amount of paint I had, you know, I could have got close to that design. But what ends up happening here is after I stretch it out, I decide... I really don't like that phthalo turquoise in there. So I end up doing another open cup on top of this. I know it's a shame it looks so pretty right now, but this is the way of acrylic pouring. So I did that. And then once I'm done with that painting, I come back in and show you how you can use paints mixed with Floetrol and water to do a swipe in several different ways. Um, I'm going to let you watch. The, the second painting is more of a demonstration than actually trying to make a painting. So you're going to see me do it multiple times. But as I said, it, it was just to show you that you can do a swipe with paints mixed with two things and achieve cells. All right, so I'm going to let you watch. All right, so it's like this weird galaxy. Now the first one I did, I decided that I did not like that green, uh, the phthalo green. So, and the um, uh, iridescent green yellow I was not liking. So that's why I decided to go through it again with some more color and the uh, open cup. And then I did a little swiping, but you see no silicone, you can still get cells. Now this here, I got more lacing, that white is lacing, but I decided not to mess with it because it almost looks like smoke through sky or it looks galaxy-ish. So I'm gonna leave this one alone because this is going to be an excellent background for me to do some mixed media work on. 
or some resin over, which I will show on my resin channel, resin it with Tammy A. Eh? Uh, but now let me just show you really quick how easy you can use these paints to do a swipe or any of those other main acrylic pouring techniques. So again, I start with a black base and I just put some color in the center. Now I'm going to apologize the first swipe my camera was off. I don't know how, but it was. So what I did was I poured the color down, poured some black in the center of it, and you see me swiping the black over the top of the color and pulling it down towards the end. There are multiple ways you can do a swipe. You can do uh, use damp paper towels. You can use actual swiping tools. Both Pour Scrape Repeat and Color Art has a nice swiping palette knife. Uh, pour scrape repeat I'm using in this video you'll see it in a minute here this uh, big green oblong looking paint spreader and uh, that works good they also have uh, other swiping tools discounts for both companies are in the description below be sure to check out the description that's where all the links for my social media my Amazon shop that you can do all your shopping through and uh, you know all the other discount codes you need so there you go there's a background for another painting okay so if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, please comment in the description, and please subscribe if you aren't already. I wish I could show you the shimmer, but my battery is pretty dead right now. But I can guarantee you, you will be seeing this in an upcoming video. So, fear not. I love you all, my friends, and until the next time... I wish you nothing but the best and happy pouring.